Peace and blessings to the 12 tribes of Israel. Today I'm going to deal with a Bible share called Honour Your Parents. Honour Your Parents. So it's very important that we honour our parents, right? Very, very important that we honour our parents. And the Bible tells us if we honour our parents, we will live long, right? So let's go to Ephesians 6 and we're going to read from 1 to 4. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honour thy father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise that is may be well with thee and thou mayest live long on the earth. And ye fathers, provoke not your children to wrath, but bring them up in a nurture and abomination. Admonition, admonition, admonition of the Lord. <laughs> so nearly said the wrong thing there. Eh? All right. So let's go back to one. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. So you must obey your parents, right? Ob honour your father and mother, which is the first commandment, with promise that it may be well with thee, and honour, and thou mayest live long on the earth, right? So the, the commandment that was given to us was to honour our father and mother, right? And that's part of the moral law in the Ten Commandments. That it may be well with thee and thou mayest live long on the earth. So if you honour your parents, you will live long on the earth. And ye fathers, provoke not your children to wrath, but bring them up in a nurture and admonition of the Lord. Right. So you've got to bring them up in the Lord. Right. So that they are God fearing. Right. So that don't make bad decisions in life. So let's now go to Exodus 20. So we're going to go to the moral law and we're going to read Exodus 20, 12. Honour thy father and mother, that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. So you're supposed to honour your parents so that you, you can live long on the land. It's very important that you honour your parents because if you honour your parents that you can see, if you don't honour your parents that you can see, how are you going to honour the Most High, right? <laughs> that's Now that's a question, right, that you need to ask yourself, right? Because if you disrespect your parents that you can see, how are you going to act towards a God that you can't see? Right. It doesn't make any sense. Right. So let's now go to Proverbs three and we're going to read from one to thirteen. My son, forget not my law, but let thine heart keep my commandments for length of days and long life. And peace shall thy add to thee. So you'll live long if you obey your parents, right? If you honour your parents. Let not mercy and truth forsake thee. Bind them upon thy neck. Write them upon the table of thine heart. So shall thou find favour and good understanding in the sight of God and man. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Lean not onto thine own understanding. You're not supposed to lean onto your own understanding. You're supposed to study to make yourself approve a good workman need not be ashamed rightly dividing the word of truth so you're supposed to be able to put precept together to make sense of the bible right so it says trust in the lord with all thine heart lean not unto thine own understanding in all the ways acknowledge him and be and he shall direct thy part be not wise in thine own eyes fear the lord and depart from evil it shall be health to thy navel and narrow to thy bones. Honour the Lord with thy substance and with the first fruits of thine increase. So shall thy barns be filled with plenty and thy presses shall burst out with new wine. My son, despise not the chastising of the Lord, neither be wary of his correction. So the Most High does chastise us. And a lot of the times we don't like it, right? The same way our earthly parents chastises us. The Most High chastises us too because he says... Um, my ways are not your ways. My thoughts, uh, he said, my ways are not your ways. And he says, my thoughts are higher than your thoughts. Right. So we can't think about the Lord. We can't think. We can't think. We, we, we can't think for the Lord. Right. His ways are higher and his thoughts are higher. His ways are higher than our ways and his thoughts are higher than our, our thoughts. Right. We can't outthink out the most high. Right. Uh, honour the Lord with thy substance and with the first fruits of all thine increase. So shall thy barns be filled with plenty and thy presses shall burst out with new wine. My son, despise not the chastising of the Lord, neither be wary of his correction for whom the Lord love it. He corrected even as a father, the son in whom he, be, he delighted. Happy is the man that findeth wisdom and the man that get it understanding. So you're supposed to get wisdom, knowledge, wisdom and understanding. Right. So the important thing to take from that is that it says that you should 
Uh, my son, forget not my law, let not heart keep my commandments. Lent are of days and long life, peace shall thy add to thee. Let not mercy and truth forsake thee, bind about thy neck, write them upon the table of thine heart. Uh, da, 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 da. So it's saying that you should you should honor. Okay, my son, despise not the chastising of the Lord, neither be wary of his correction. For the Lord love it, receive it, even as a father, the son in whom he delights. Okay, right. So, so the bit is here. For whom the Lord love it, he corrected, even as a father, the son in whom he delighted. Okay, so you must understand that father and son relationship. And in order to do that, <laughs> in order to understand the relationship between us and God himself, you're supposed to understand the relationship between you and and your father right okay so let's move on now okay so let's move on now and we uh, so you've got to trust your lord trust the lord in your heavenly father in order to trust your heavenly father you're supposed to you you should really have a good relationship with your own father right because if you have a good relationship with your own father you understand the heavenly father right but it doesn't does doesn't mean if you don't have a good relationship with your father or you don't you don't know your father your earthly earthly father you're not going to have a good relationship with the most high but that helps in the understanding of that relationship right so let's go to proverbs 4 and we're going to read from 1 to 14. Hear ye children, the instruction of the Father, tend to no understanding. For I gave you good doctrine, forsake ye not my law. For I was your father's son, tender and only be beloved in the sight of my mother. He taught me also and said unto me, let thine heart retain my words, keep my commandments and live. Get wisdom, get understanding, forget it not, neither decline from the words of my mouth, forsake her not. She shall preserve thee, love her, and she shall keep thee. Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom, and in all you're getting, get understanding. Exalt her, and she shall promote thee. She shall bring thee to honour when thou doest embrace her. She shall give to thine head an ornament of grace. A crown of glory shall she deliver to thee. Hear, O my son, receive my sayings, and the years of thy life shall be many. I have taught thee in way of wisdom. I have led thee in right paths. When thou goest, thou step shall not be straightened, and when thou run it, thou shall not stumble. Take fast hold of the instruction, let her not go. Keep her, for she is thine life. Enter not into the path of the wicked, and go not in the way of a wicked man. Right? So, wisdom is understood from the Lord. Right? So, all these things are relationships. Right? In order to understand God, you need to have a good at least an honourable relationship with your parents. All these things are spiritual, really. All these things are spiritual. Now, let's now go to Ecclesiasticus. So we're going to go to Sirah 3, and we're going to read from 1 to 12. So we're going to go to Sirah 3, and we are going to read from 1 to 12. Hear me, your father, O children, do therefore that ye may be saved. For the Lord hath given the father honour over the children, and hath confirmed the authority of the mother over the sons. Whoso honoureth his father maketh an atonement for his sins, and he that honoureth his mother is as one that layeth up treasure. Whoso honoureth his father shall have joy of his own children, and when he maketh his prayer he shall be heard. Right? So honouring your, you must honour your father because that's important, right? He that honoureth his father shall have a long life and he that is obedient unto his unto the Lord shall be a comfort to his mother. He that feareth the Lord will honour his father. So it's like what I've just been saying, right? It's important to honour your father, right? Not to hate your father, not to despise your father and have a, a, a kind of, you know, I'm not speaking to you because I can't stand you kind of relationship with your father, right? You should honour your father regardless of who he is and what he's done, right? Because all these things are spiritual. Because like I've said before, if you have an earthly father and you dishonour your earthly father, how can you trust in a, in a father that you can't even see, right? Anyhow, seven. Now, it doesn't mean if you um, don't have a father, then you can't believe in the most high. But I'm saying is that it's a spiritual thing. If you do have an earthly father, then you should honor your father. Right. Because all these things are spiritual. Right. <laughs> and it's the Lord's way of you connecting with your earthly father by honoring your 
with your heavenly father by honouring your earthly father, right? So let's read seven again. He that feareth the Lord will honour his father and will do service unto his parents as to his master. So it's saying it here, honour thy father and mother both in word and deed. So you're not supposed to just say it, say it, but actually do it. That a blessing may come upon thee from them. So if your parents ask you to do something, you're grown up and your parents ask you to do something, you should do it. You should honour them. Don't say you're going to do something and then when it comes down to it, you know where to be found. Don't do that, right? That's dishonourable. For the blessing of the father established the houses of children, but the curse of the mother rooted out foundations, right? Uh, glory not in the dis dishonour of thy father, for thy father's dishonour is no glory unto thee. So don't let your mother say disparaging things uh, about your father or at least if she's saying disparaging things about your father don't hate your father because of what she said because a story has two sides so <laughs> you know women have the knack for saying things that make them look good right so they demonize the man right and they've been doing it for a long time now it's 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 now pretty obvious now it's what they do all the time they demonize the man say ah he's a this he's a that he he didn't want to see you hated you and you know just to poison your mind against your father don't give in to that honor him still regardless for the blessings of the father established the house of children but the curse of the mother rooted out foundation Glory not in the dishonour of thy father, for thy father's dishonour is no glory unto thee, right? So still give him honour, regardless of what you think or what, or what your mother said about your father, still give him the honour that he deserves because he brought you here, right? We're going to get, we'll come on to that soon. 11. For the glory of man is the beginning of honour of his father, and a mother in, in dishonour is a reproach to the children. My son, help thy father in his age, grieve him not as long as he live it, right? So... If you have a father that, if you're lucky enough to have a father that is still alive, you honour him, right? Don't keep banging, banging on about you didn't, you weren't there when I was a kid. You did this to me when I was a kid. You left me alone when I was a kid. You beat me when I was a kid. Don't keep banging on about it. And you're 30 and 40 and 50. Don't keep banging on about stuff like that when you're 30 years old because you look weak. You look stupid, right? <laughs> By the age of 30, because just think about it, you become a man at 20s. So you should at least during the 10 years that you've been a man, been able to be your own man. You should have at least come to terms with that. Right. The Bible says when I was a child, I, I, I thought like a child. I think like a child. But when I become grown, I put away childish things. Right. So so we are when we come grown ups, we're supposed to all the things that bothered us when we were children. We are supposed to come to terms with those things. And press on, right? Press on because people make mistakes, right? Sarah 7, and we're going to read from 23 to 28. Hast thou children, instruct them and bow down their neck from their youth, right? So this is the way how you raise children, right? Hast thy daughters, have a care of their body and show not thyself cheerful towards them. Marry thy daughter, so shall thou perform a weighty matter and give her to a man of understanding. So you're, supposed to, uh, you're supposed to raise your daughter and give her away to a man of understanding, a good man, a God-fearing man. Hast thou a wife after thy mind? Forsake her not, but give not thyself over to a light woman. So you're not supposed to give yourself over to a wicked, silly woman, right? A woman that is... That is that is not submissive, not quiet spirited. A woman that argues the whole time is a feminist who loves Babylon the Great, is very westernized in her thinking. She knows everything about feminism. A woman that uses the buzzwords, which is he's controlling. Um, I'm a victim of domestic abuse. It was a toxic relationship. <laughs> he acted like my father. You're not my father. You know, that type of woman, don't give your don't give your life away to a light woman. Give your life away to to an intelligent woman. An intelligent woman is a woman that knows how to speak to her husband. He's submissive, quiet spirited, and she lets her husband take the lead. That's that's an intelligent woman. Let's let's read 26. Hast thou a wife after thy mind? So you must have a wife that is after your mind, right? That 
fears the Lord, loves the Lord and wants to do the right thing by the Lord. Forsake her not. Don't, don't, don't. Just because she's not as pretty, uh, as pretty as, as the other one with a big mouth. No, forsake her not. But give not thyself over to a light woman. Don't give yourself over to a stupid woman. Have no intelligence. All she does is just break marriages apart, break family apart, cause dysfunction of households, cause the husband to die before his time. That's not the woman you want to be with. Don't give yourself over to a light woman. Honour thy father with thy own heart and forget not the sorrows of thy mother. So you must honour your father with your own heart. So you must honour him regardless of what he's done. And forget not the sorrows of thy mother. So it doesn't mean you honour in him you hate your mother. You honour her too. You know, because they both brought you here. It's going to carry on and say it. Remember that thou was begotten of them. And how canst thou recompense them the things that they have done for thee? So when you're thinking about dishonouring your parents, just think, if not for your father's seed, you wouldn't be here, right? If not for your mother's egg and her womb, you wouldn't be here. And she carried you for nine months. And then when you were born, she breastfed you, right? That alone is enough to, to make you want to honour your parents. Let's read 28 again. Remember that thou was begotten of them. They brought you here. And how canst they recompense them? You can't pay them back. You can't pay your father for his seed. You can't pay your mother for her egg and for her womb and for her ch for childbirth and for carrying you for nine months and putting up with, with kicks in the womb. You can't pay her back. All the pain that she went through to bring you here, you can't pay her back. The things that they have done for thee and all the things that they have done for you, right? Let's read it again. Remember that thou was forgotten of them and how canst thou recompense them? The things that they have done for you. You can't repay them back for those things. Right. And all the other things that they've done for you, you know, they sacrificed for you that your father has worked hard to provide for you. Even if he didn't work hard to provide for you, you still give him his honor because he brought you here. Right. And the mother has provided for you, too. Right. Fear the Lord. So let's carry on to, we are carrying on to 28. Okay. Fear the Lord with all thy soul and reverence his priest. Okay, that go, goes on to talking about something else. But the important thing that I wanted to take from that is that you must honour your parents because they brought you here, right? The Most High used them as a vessel to bring you here, right? So you must give them honour. Regardless of what you think of them, you still have to honour them. Regardless of what they have done, you still have to honour them simply because the Most High used them to bring you here. Sirah 42, we're going to read from 9 to 11. The father waketh for the daughter when no man know it, and the care for her taken away sleep when she is young. Least she pass away the flower of her age, and being married, least she should be hated. So, the, so a good father is thinking about her, his daughter, and he doesn't want to think of his daughter having sex with every Tom, Dick and Harry. He don't want to think about that. Right. He definitely doesn't want to think about that. He's thinking about how do I give my daughter away with her flower intact? Right. And she he does not want to have a pregnant daughter living in his house because that shows he's a failure. He's not a great parent. Right. But her taking away sleep, you know, he's having sleepless nights thinking about his daughter because he doesn't want his daughter uh, uh, having getting pregnant by every Tom, Dick and Harry. He wants his daughter to be happy and he wants his daughter to get the protection, the leadership that she needs, the head that she needs. Lee, she passed away the flower of her age and being married, Lee, she should be hated. 10. And her virginity, Lee, she shall be defied and begotten and gotten with child in her father's house and having a husband, Lee, she should misbehave herself, right? So that's another thing. You don't want her misbehaving herself and breaking her marriage apart. You know, having strife. And when she is married, at least she should be barren. Because if she's misbehaving in that relationship, she's not listening to her husband. The Most High can curse her by being barren. Right. That's what a lot of people don't seem to understand. If you are badly behaved, that's why a lot of feminists, you know, the really nasty, vicious feminists, you know, they don't have children because the Most High curse them. He, he makes them barren. Right. He curse their womb. 
It doesn't open that womb. He just makes them barren because they're wicked. 11. Keep a sure watch over shameless daughter. Lest you make the laughing stock to thine enemies and a byword in the city and a reproach among the people and make thee ashamed before the multitude. Okay, so we got... All right, so uh, let's... Behold not everybody's beauty and sit not in the midst of women. Okay, all right, so that goes on talking about something else. But the important thing to take from that is that you should honour your father because even the times when you're not thinking your father is thinking about you, he's worried. Okay, he's worried about you. And he wants you because the whole point is that your father is is your head until you, he finds you a husband. Right. So that's how it should be done. Right. So the father, you, when you find a husband now, he can now say, yes, I'm going to give my daughter away to this man who is her husband. Right. And before then, he's buried thinking, I do not want my daughter to be used and to be treated as being a sex object. Right. A whore, basically. Right. All right. So Tobit 10. And we are going to read from one to twelve. Right. So we read it Tobit 10 and we are going to read from one to twelve. So this is. We're still dealing with honour your parents, and now we're going to deal with the in-laws, right? So we're reading Tobit 10. So we're going to read about Tobit and how he dealt with uh, the his... Uh, we, we're going to deal with um, Tobias and Sarah, right? So Tobias, his dad was Tobit, and his son was Tobias, and Tobias was married to Sarah, and Edna was Tobit's wife. And the in-laws was Ragul, right? So, so Ragul and his wife, right? So let's read. We are reading Tobit 10 and we're going to read from 1 to 12. Now, Tobit, his father, counted every day. And when the days of the journey were expired and they came not, then Tobit said, are they detained or is, or is Gabal dead? There is no man to give him the money. Therefore, he was very sorrow. Then his wife said unto him, my son is dead. Seeing he stay at long and he began to bewail him and said, now I care for nothing. My son, since I have let thee go and light of mine eyes to whom Tobit said, hold thy peace. Take no care for he is safe. But she said, hold thy peace and deceive me not. My son is dead. And she went out every day into the way which they went and did eat no meat on the daytime and ceased not whole nights to bewail her son Tobias until the 14 days of the wedding were expired, which Ragul had sworn that he should spend there. Then Tobias said to Ragul, Ragul so Tobias was, was a guy that, that married uh, Ragul's daughter. Let me go, for my father and my mother took no more to see me. But his father-in-law said unto him, Tarry with me, and I will send thy father, and I shall declare unto him how things go with thee. But Tobias, Tobias said, No, but let me go to my father. Then Ragul arose and gave him Sarah, his wife, and half his goods, servants, and cattle, and money. And he blessed them and sent them away, saying, Right. So that's that's Tobias and Sarah, his wife. And he he blessed them and sent them away, saying, the God of heaven, give you a prosperous journey, my children. And he said to his daughter. So that's that's Ragul saying his daughter, Sarah, honor thy father and thy mother in law. Right. So that's Tobias, his mother and father, which are now thy parents. So so now she has a new set of parents that I may hear good report of thee. Right. So. So Ragul is saying to his daughter that I may hear a good report of thee. He kissed her. Edna also said to Tobias, Edna was, um, it was Tobias's mother. The Lord of heaven restore thee, my dear brother, and grant that I may see thy children of my daughter, Sarah, before I die. Right. So she's talking about her grandchildren. That I may rejoice before the Lord. Behold, I commit my daughter unto thee of special trust. Wherefore, do not entreat her evil. Okay, right. So, important thing that we want to take from that is that the in-laws is that when you marry. So, when you marry, you are marrying in the in-laws. So, therefore, they now become 
your mother-in-law and your father-in-law, hence the word, right? So even them, you're supposed to give honor, right? Now, I read this story because, now this obviously was in the Old Testament, but I read this story because all scripture is supposed to be read you can gain something from all scriptures, right? Because the Bible says we should rightly divide the word of God. So we're supposed to look to see what we can get from it and whether we should still follow it or not. So obviously that's in the Bible. So that's something that we can follow, right? Which doesn't contradict the New Testament. So let's read 2 Timothy. Let's read 2 Timothy 3. And we're going to read from 16 to 17. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. So all scriptures. Remember, the Bible says that we should study to make ourselves approved. Right. So we we link the precepts to see what we should be doing, whether whether we can still follow it, whether it's an Old Testament law that is has been annulled in the New Testament. We work it out. Right. So let's read 16 again. All scripture is given by inspiration, that's the Bible, of God and profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the, the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Right. So there's a reason why the Bible has the New Testament and the Old Testament. Right. They have it all together with all the stories and all the laws and everything so that we can rightly divide the word of truth. Right. So obviously that story with Tobias, we can still follow this today. You know, we can still follow that today because it doesn't contradict what Christ has said. Right. So we can still honor our mother-in-law and father-in-law obviously this is a natural thing you don't need a bible to tell you that you know because they're your in-laws so obviously you should get on with your in-laws so the bible does say you should honor your parents and that includes your in-laws right now brothers and sisters i hope you were edified by this um it is a topic that i've always wanted to do a series of scriptures on and hopefully edify the listeners right now brothers and sisters i hope you're edified shalom